I, 27, female, have been married to my husband for a year now and my husband, 29, male, recently brought home a woman who seemed to be around our age. He introduced her to me as his estranged sister, even though he'd never mentioned having a sister ever before. So I was really shocked by that. He told me that she'd been kicked out of the family around five years ago since she'd run away with a guy twice her age. We didn't know each other back then, so there was no way for me to find out since after she ran away, his family apparently erased all traces of her existence and never ever brought her up. This is what he told me and said that now we needed to take care of her and let her live with us since The man she ran away with abandoned her for someone else. I did think that the story he told me was kind of far-fetched since it really felt like something straight out of a movie. But when I expressed my concerns, my husband lashed out at me and seemed really upset about the implication that he was lying, so I didn't ask about it any further. But then, A few days in, I started noticing certain things that just seemed really off to me. Sometimes when I'd walk into a room, they'd be whispering and would stop all of a sudden when they saw me. And they used to sit really close with his supposed sister, often resting her head on his lap. And even though I did think it was kind of weird, I tried not to make a big deal out of it. But deep down, I thought there was something really off about this whole situation And I had no idea who to talk to about this either. I couldn't ask his family about it since he'd basically forbidden me from talking about it. And I certainly couldn't ask my own parents because they wouldn't like the idea of this and would probably end up going to his family anyway. So I decided that I had to find out the truth for myself since there were several red flags. They seemed way too close to be just siblings, but I couldn't say anything about it without upsetting my husband, and then he'd refuse to talk to me and I would never find out the truth. So I decided to ask the one person from my husband's family I knew I could count on. The reason I knew my husband in the first place. My husband's first cousin, who happens to be one of my closest friends from high school. It took a lot of courage, but I eventually did end up approaching her to ask about the truth of his estranged sister and was shocked to find out that my husband never had any sister in the first place. I'd met her in person so I could see her expression when she told me that my husband was the only child of his parents. She looked extremely taken aback and concerned when I revealed to her how my husband had brought some woman home claiming that she was his sister and we'd even been living with her for a couple of days now. She confirmed that he had no sister, and when I showed her a picture of his so-called sister, she told me that she'd never seen this woman before. That was devastating in itself, but I knew that I had to find out more, so I decided to go through that woman's belongings. That proved to be sort of difficult since she was always in the guest room and didn't let her bags out of sight if she could help it. So I had to wait for her to go take a shower to go snooping through her stuff. It took me a few minutes and I had to search really hard, but I did end up finding her passport and it listed her as a 32-year-old female who had a really familiar name. One thing was for sure, my husband had been lying to me about her identity because the name on her passport didn't match the one my husband had told me. I took a picture of it and left her things as it is since now. I had all the proof I needed to confront my husband. So far, I've been staying home with the other woman. I'll call her Rita now since I didn't fully trust her and my husband didn't mind it since he believed that she could do with some company even though we hardly even spoke to each other. And yesterday, when my husband came back home in the evening, I pulled him aside as soon as he returned and confronted him with the pictures of his so-called sister's passport. I told him that I'd done some digging and I knew now that this wasn't his sister, so he needed to come clean to me right now. He got really mad at me and told me that I didn't trust him and couldn't believe that I'd gone behind his back, but I didn't care about any of this. 
His getting so defensive only went on to prove that he definitely was hiding something big. So we ended up getting into a pretty big fight over this. Even Rita heard it and barged into the room looking really surprised. My husband didn't even hesitate before telling her what the fight was about and that woman immediately turned to me and started screaming at me about how I had no right to go through her things. The sheer audacity of it was ridiculous to me and I scoffed in her face to which she started yelling at me even louder. When it looked like I was going to make the fight worse, my husband told me that he was leaving and would come back to me when I was ready to respect his boundaries. This whole thing was nothing short of ridiculous to me and I had absolutely no idea how to react, but little did I know that there were more such horrible surprises for me in store. I didn't try to stop him last night since I was fuming and had half a mind to file for divorce this morning itself, but then I received a call from one of my dad's neighbors asking me if I'd be willing to meet for lunch today since I was nearby anyway. I was kind of confused since I hadn't visited my dad for two weeks, so she had no reason to be under the impression that I was visiting and I told her that I wasn't there, but then she told me that she'd seen my husband's car pull up in the driveway really late last night and had seen him go in with a woman. Obviously, she assumed that the woman was me when it was actually Rita. I didn't bother explaining much to my neighbor because at the moment, I wasn't really concerned about what she thought of me, but more about why my father of all people was letting my husband stay with him when we were fighting. So I called him up immediately and asked him about it, to which he seemed really hesitant to reply. But when I said that if he didn't tell me what was going on, then I'd cut him out of my life forever, that seemed to do the trick, and he finally spilled the beans on everything that had been going on. So the woman, Rita, whom my husband had brought home, was no other than his boss's daughter. Here's the deal. A year ago, my dad had helped my husband get hired in the company that he works in since it offered a better salary and position, so he took it up readily. My dad is still working and is higher up in the same company and is close friends with the founder and CEO as well, which is why Rita's real name felt so familiar to me. Now, the situation was that Rita's real name was pretty common, which is why none of my Google searches helped me track her down. She was a really private person as well, so I'd never seen her in person before, which is why I wasn't able to recognize her. Plus, I'd never really taken any interest in my dad and husband's line of work because it seemed kind of boring to me, so I'd never attended any of their work events. This reader, though, had spotted my husband at one such work event and had fallen for him instantly. A few months ago, she'd been able to trace him, and in spite of the fact that he was married, she asked him out, and my husband agreed to it. Naturally, the next step was to start an extramarital affair, which they were very careful to keep under wraps, but Rita's dad, my dad, and husband's employer were able to find out somehow, and that created a huge mess for them. Of course, like any other respectable person, he wasn't happy with the fact that his daughter had chosen to be someone else's mistress, and of one of his employees, no less. He was furious and wanted her to break things off instantly, but she wasn't going to do that, because apparently that's how much she loved my husband. So she ended up getting kicked out of her house, which is when my husband brought her home. A few days later, their boss got in touch with my dad and told him all about the affair. At least someone had the good sense to be upset by all of this because so far, it seemed to me that neither my dad nor my husband thought that this was a big deal. Anyway, after my boss filled my dad in, he wanted him to put an end to all of this somehow and even offered to promote both of them if they were able to convince Rita to come back home and leave my husband but the woman is hell-bent and blatantly refuses to abandon my husband. My husband brought her to my dad's place last night, since that was the only safe space for them, and my dad was obliged to take them in since it was his boss's daughter after all. Even while he was explaining all of this to me, 
I couldn't believe that this was happening to me because it was literally awful. Not only the fact that my husband had been cheating on me, but to top it off, my dad was now helping his cheating son-in-law and his mistress because his job was at stake. It literally felt as if I was a huge nobody to both of them, and they'd taken me for granted. I ended up sobbing for hours today, not a clue what to do next, because no matter what they'd done, they were still the two most important men in my life, and I couldn't bring myself to accept the fact that they'd screwed me over like this. I felt like crap for the entire day. But now, I just want to do something to get over this. I know it sounds petty as hell, but I can't help it. That's how I feel right now. I want to hurt them way worse than they're hurting me right now and want to make sure that they realize what a huge mistake they've made. I even know what I want to do, but it might effectively ruin all of their reputation. I know for a fact if I ask my old neighbor to click me a few pictures of the three of them together, she'll do it for me. And my husband didn't take his laptop with him. As far as I know, it's not password protected because he's never had to hide anything, but that might have changed in the recent few months. It's not a concern, though, and with a little effort, I'll be able to get through. I'm thinking about sending a mass email to all his co-workers about what's happening with him and their boss's daughter. I know it's petty and low, but that's what I want to do. I have no hopes of fixing my relationship with my husband or even my dad, so I might as well get my revenge. So WIBTA, if I sent out a mass email to all their co-workers telling them the truth? Update one. I did it. It's been a day since I sent out the email and it's been crazy. Not just for my husband, but my dad, but for me as well. I got my neighbor to do a little snooping and she managed to get me a few pictures of the three of them. My dad, my husband and Rita sitting around the coffee table looking like they're arguing and it definitely does seem like something is up. And that was all I needed so I typed out an email with the gist of what was happening and sent it out a day ago. Thankfully my husband's laptop wasn't password protected so it was easy to access his email. I was kind of terrified of what was going to happen next since this was bound to have serious repercussions. I was proven right the next day when my dad called me up and cussed me out for what I'd done. He told me that both he and my husband had been summoned by the company and they were likely to get into a crap load of trouble, legal and otherwise, since by then pretty much everyone in the company and even their business associates were aware of what had happened. The news had spread like wildfire among their co-workers, and I didn't mind it, to be honest. I told him that they deserved it and hung up, then refused to answer any calls from him after that. I know that last evening some aged-looking man, probably Rita's father, showed up at my dad's house, and that was followed by a lot of screaming and shouting, and eventually ended with Rita being dragged out of the house while she screamed bloody murder. But there was no stopping her dad. Neither my dad nor my husband tried to intervene and only watched while she was taken away. A short while after, there was some more arguing and then my husband left as well. My guess is he's probably living with a friend or at a hotel since he hasn't come back home and for his own sake, he better not show up either. I don't feel particularly warm and welcoming towards him. He hasn't called or texted yet, so I'm guessing he knows he messed up and is staying away out of shame. Well, good for him. Update two. I guess I was wrong about my husband having any shame. It's been a week since he left, and today he came back. Not because he wanted to apologize, but because he wanted to save money and didn't want to waste it living in a hotel when he had a house. He showed up a few hours ago, and once I'd seen him through the intercom, I told him that I wasn't going to let him in. He seemed to get really mad at that and said that this was his house too, so I had to let him in whether I wanted to or not. But to be honest, this wasn't his house. It was mine, since this house was a wedding gift to me from my parents, so he really didn't have the right to set foot here after what he'd done to me. 
When I told him that, he started trying to manipulate me and even said that I owed him this since I was the reason he was out of work at the moment, so I absolutely had to compensate for it. I couldn't hold back my laughter when he said that because honestly, he was the reason he was out of work. I hadn't advised him to go have an affair with his boss's daughter. He'd done that all by himself, so the credit for ruining his own life should go to only him. He went on arguing with me for a while, but after some time, he got really upset and just started banging on my door like a madman. I'll admit that he, that did scare me a little, but if anything, that just ensured that I wouldn't open the door. I told him that if he didn't stop doing that, that I'd call the cops and he'd be in even bigger trouble than he is right now, which seemed to make him stop. Then, for the next 15 minutes or so, he screamed the most horrible things that he'd do to me if he ever saw me in public. And I actually thought that he must have lost his mind since he did sound nothing short of depraved at that point. I still wasn't scared, though, and just recorded his entire rant because it had probably helped with the divorce proceedings. I'd filed for divorce a couple of days ago and was going to serve him as soon as I could anyway, so I didn't see the point in arguing any further. Yet again, I told him to get the hell off my property or else I really would call the cops this time and he finally went away. I don't know where he went and neither do I care enough to find out. He could be rotting in hell for all I care because after everything that's happened, he doesn't deserve any mercy or kindness from me. As for my dad, he hasn't contacted me since the last phone call we had and I'm hoping that he keeps it this way. If mom was alive today, she'd probably have set him straight and it's a pity I don't have her on my side now. But it's all right. I'll deal with this on my own. Update three. It's been two weeks since my last update and I served my husband around a week ago with the divorce papers. He'd been living with a friend of his and so far had been able to hide everything from his parents, but now there was no hiding anything anymore because obviously he had to explain my absence in his life and the reason why he had to move out. His family was shell-shocked and even they reached out to me to apologize for what he'd done and even console me, which was pretty sweet of them. His dad told me that he'd definitely be out of my life and they'd ensure that he doesn't do anything else to bother me anymore. I'm guessing it means that they're going to make sure he doesn't contest the divorce and doesn't try to negotiate during the settlement. It's nice that they're trying to look out for me and compensating for the disgusting things that my husband did. It's way better than the way my own father is treating me at least. He's cut me out of his life completely and has even announced on his social media that he has no ties with me anymore. That was a couple of days ago and I still haven't managed to get over it. I know that I should have seen this coming because duh, what else would he have done after I messed up his reputation and career? But then again, this is my own father that we're talking about. Had anyone else, literally any other person done the same thing to me, maybe it wouldn't have hurt as much. It would have stung, sure, but this just breaks my heart. This is the man who raised me and now he's refusing to even acknowledge the fact that he was wrong and painting me as the bad guy when he knows full well whose fault it really was. He could have chosen to pick his daughter, but he didn't do that in the first place, which is why we're here now. It's a pity that this is happening and I'm sure that my mother would have been shattered had she been alive. But then, if she'd been alive, none of this would have happened at all. I'm grateful for my neighbor and my friend, though. They've been nothing but the most emotionally supportive friends I could have asked for, and they're really helping me find reasons to not give up on the world right now. They're checking up on me almost every other day, and I'm reminded that maybe my father doesn't love me, but some people definitely do, and that's enough for me. Update 4. Hey, folks. It's been a month since I filed for divorce and true to their words, my in-laws made sure that my husband doesn't contest a divorce. I don't know how they managed to do it, but I'm grateful that they did. I also wish that they could have stopped him from harassing me on call last night. 
I just began to get over this whole incident, but I was reminded yet again of just how cruel my husband was capable of being last night. He'd call me from a number I didn't recognize, and naturally I answered it since I didn't expect it to be him. As soon as I answered the call, he started yelling all sorts of expletives at me and called me every derogatory name that he could think of. For the first few seconds, I barely even knew how to react to that and couldn't even believe that this was happening right now. He sounded pretty drunk and was slurring his words and after I finally comprehended what was going on, I hung up immediately and tried to block that number. But then he texted me from another number, presumably his friends, and sent me a long text full of errors, but still readable about how I deserved everything that had happened to me, and even worse. He even mocked how my own father didn't want me anymore and taunted me by saying that even my dad didn't want me, then it was really unlikely that any husband would. He then went on to make fun of every single thing about me and told me that he hated all of it, from the way I looked to the way I talked and wished nothing but the worst for me. I was devastated by that because this is the man I'd been in love with and married to for so long, and now he was the one going out of his way to hurt me emotionally. Once again, I felt awful about myself and broke down. I think I must have sobbed for hours before I was finally able to bring myself to forward that text to his parents and inform them that he was still bothering me so they do something to keep him under control. They reassured me that they do their best and that made me feel a little better, but still, I couldn't get over the horrible things that he'd said, mostly because they were true. My father had indeed pushed me away for good, and there wasn't much I could do about it. Not just that. Even my husband had done the same, so obviously I pretty much had lost any faith I had in men or in love. I guess only therapy can undo this damage and make me feel like myself again, so I've started looking into therapists around me, and I'm trying my best to channel all my energy into my work. Things have been bad, but hopefully it'll get better soon. I'm going to surround myself with people who love me and whom I love and hope for the best. Stay tuned for more stories from Our Girl Relationships.